Hello Polygoners, I am Shaft, you are watching Polygon Gaming, and welcome to Newbie Tuesday. Today I've got a bit of a doozy for you, and guess what? Yet again, jumping to my rescue is none other than Zerg Herd, because last week I asked you guys for some losses to be sent in. Remember, you can send replays in to my email, cheesyshaft at gmail.com, as you see on the screen, or link in the description. So today we're going to be looking at a little bit of cheese and actually you can already see two SCVs have been pulled out over here so it looks like it's going to be some kind of uh, barracks rush. And cheese is a little bit annoying but if you're paying attention to your opponent's expenditure and let's face it, Zerg Herd is going for a drone scout which Honestly, I don't agree with, but I think if you're working under the assumption that you're better than your opponent and, you know, you're on the ladder and whatnot, this is the right move because it's going to allow you to adapt and to scout. Now, Jay is not going to scout or adapt properly, but that's going to be its own story. So, first thing we want to notice is that this barracks here was started first. This one was next. So, naturally, we already know that this is late. So, my first question is, number one, when should it have been started? We could roughly say that should have been started 28 seconds ago. That's 15, 13, 47 seconds. So... We've got about a 10 second delay on this barracks. Now we could just chalk that up to our opponent being bad, but I would say never do that because even if you're wrong, like even if your opponent actually is bad, you're gonna beat him. But if you're right and he's doing something ch cheeky, you're also gonna be able to beat him. So either way, it's a win-win situation for you. Just assume he's smart, okay? So the next thing that this, uh, this drone's gonna scout is no gas here. Smart going around the mineral lines. No gas here. So he's got a late barracks. He hasn't spent any of these gas. And, well, there's really no place he could have put a command center. So this actually looks like a command center first build. The fact that you're not seeing a command center. And, you know, no gold bases. I would definitely hazard to say that this is some kind of cheese immediately. Honestly, the moment you saw this, you probably could have thought that. But again, with the no gas, this is 100% confirmation it's going to be cheese. Now, in reaction to this, we're not going to see much uh, action here by Zerkert. And I want to talk for a moment before we get too deep into this game about the Triforce model. So remember that technology, gas, um, they give you tactical options to defeat your opponent and gain advantages. So, like, you might not have the biggest army in the world, but if you have a technological army, you can still defeat your opponent's composition, whatever it may be. So, you know, having a Ling Baneling army against a SCV or, um, and Marine attack, or, you know, in this case, just Marines, I believe. I don't remember if SCVs came along with it. But having some banelings there, you're going to need much fewer numbers of banelings with a handful of lings. If you just wanted to defeat that attack with nothing but lings, you're going to need a ton of lings, which means a lot of larva and probably more mineral income than you could get on two bases. So gas opens up certain technological and tactical options for a player. Having an army just you know keeps you safe and combine that with te uh, technology and you have a really good chance at defeating an opponent either defensively or offensively. Now the issue is that you also need to feed your economy throughout all this and you can't do all three. So if you're going to win early game or your opponent is trying to kill you early game, you must sacrifice some of your economy for the other two categories. And this is where you're actually going to see Zerg Herd failing a little bit here because as soon as Metabolic Boost finishes he's going to pull off this extractor. We'll come back to that though because as you can see this game's shaping up fairly normal. Again this 
not seeing a command center it was good to double check that um, also uh, you do this weird spiral thing when you're building this just do a simple patrol from here to here um, it, it just takes too much time to do that whole little spirally thing yeah I'd show it on screen but you know what I'm talking about so something else I would like to talk about is the fact oh here's another one of those spirals you do this with a drone too it's just weird I'm not sure why you do that but also this overlord is not in the best position and honestly I don't like this first overlord being sent to the natural either I always send this overlord up here because it allows me to scout what add-ons here factory or starport around here because they typically are built nearby for floating reasons so getting an overlord here to scout up here gives you so much information of the map we were talking about in fact in pigs uh one of Pig's newest videos, I think it came out today, he was talking about this map in particular. I will link to that in the description if you guys want to see uh, him talking about this particular segment of the map. It's a pretty interesting study. Actually, I'll see if he'll give me permission to throw that on the back of this video. If you don't see it on the back of this video, check the description. Alright, so we got the Banshee going to be popping out. This is going to hurt uh, Scarlet's attack, but she does have the two queens here. There is nothing to detect the cloak, though. It's got about... 25 seconds or so left on it uh, of course roaches and ravagers can break this front but they have to do it before cloak finishes else this is probably going to be a a bad situation here for Gumiho. now scarlet going to be rushing right into oh and back down that choke point very careful not to get caught in that just yet only running forward when the corruptors have the ability to cast a spell and at this point actually going to be rushing the choke point as well and you see she's bleeding quite a bit of the uh the ravagers but she's got a few left over the queen's going to be coming into support with the banshee uh my second overlord which again you're using defensively and i don't quite understand that um that should be coming here this is a perfect spot for that only you wouldn't go this far you'd stop right here anyways um that would have really helped you because let's face it a marine is going to be able to kill this overlord if there is any kind of rush that's not going to do that great defensively overlords are great at scouting drops but drops aren't coming right now so this is just uh it just seems odd So this is a weird time for an SCV to show up. This should definitely tip off his hand just a little bit. This is a really late SCV. So why is it coming? What's it doing? And why is it circling back underneath this overlord? Also, why is this a defensive overlord again? Overlords are supposed to be on your opponent's side of the map so that you can react to little simple move outs like this or this. Also, these Onaga Towers. I don't care what map it is. Ling costs 25 minerals. You only need one Ling to hold his Onaga Tower. Even if he kills it, every time you put it there, put it there. Alright, so now you're getting a third. But I've listed off all the reasons why. You already know this is going to be cheese. And had you had an overlord here, you could have thrown it in here and seen there are still no gas taken. At this point, no gas, no expansion, you know he's going to come kill you. Some of these links could be scouting around on the map. You've made them, but you're not really doing that much with them. Even in a typical game, you would take the first two and you try to like steer it away from the expected Reaper and get it over here to harass this expansion. Typically, a Terran will build that on the low ground and you can kill a couple SCVs that way. The other two are here to zone the Reaper on creep. You never run off of the creep because he's going to win that battle and you try to avoid any KD-8 charges until the Queen pops. When the Queen pops, she can work as a pivot point um, and knock the uh, the Reaper back. At the moment you get Ling Speed, you can go kill a Reaper, so it's his job to just be annoying and take Zonaga Towers. But you still have Ling Speed. <laughs> and now his attack is finally coming. Now this does not have Stem Pack, it does not have any major upgrades. But in three bursts he's able to kill an Overlord just because he's had so much time to build up this army. The queen falls, 
and you really don't have any composition. But imagine if you had had some banelings. Ever since Metabolic Boost finished, you've been pulled off here. And you've got 100 gas, you could have built a baneling nest a long time ago. This overlord should know that there is nothing here. You can see this mining, there's no SEVs, it's still sitting at 1500. Okay? So that's kind of where you're at right now. You've actually seen all the information, you just didn't react to it. And you're still stuck on this whole pulling off the gas thing without understanding why gas is useful and where technology helps you. Remember, sometimes you just have to sacrifice that little bit of economy, not make those extra drones, not get that third base, or maybe get the third base because that is some production that you can use in your attack. So get the third base before you get the drones. I think that's really where where you're like making a little bit of a mistake because you understand that you're supposed to get the get the third base but sometimes that's the same as a Terran just adding on three more barracks because you make army units out of that hatchery it's not always a bad decision to get another base a little bit quicker it's not always an economic one sometimes that's an army based decision because you now have more production to make more army but you then you made drones and that's really where you died had you had some banelings and just made a round or two of drones the last round, you'd be in the sickest position possible. There was no reason to go take a third base when your opponent didn't even have their natural or any gas. None at all. Anyways, man, you sent me this. You told me you knew it was a pretty obvious loss. I do agree with that. But um, hopefully... You're beginning to see the consequences of some of the decisions you make in game. I think even with the failures to react so often, had you done two things differently, you still would have won this game. Kept a little bit on gas, even just one worker, maybe two. I would have liked three because I like the faster spire, but hey, that's me. In any case... You also needed a quicker bane lane nest. Right now, Terran are loving uh, doing a, like a more drop-based style. Sometimes they'll incorporate the Hellions, but their, their Marines are really the crooks of their army right now. And it's coming particularly early. So getting the bane lane nest a little bit earlier isn't a bad thing at our level. And even at GM levels, you are seeing some pros doing it. In any case, man, I am Shaft with Polygon Gaming. Thank you guys so much for watching this. Please consider donating at least $1 to us on Patreon. We run StarCraft events for the community with some of the best players you can imagine. You can vote on our Patreon to see what players you want coming out next. Shadowly, my dudes. See you next time. If you want to be notified when we release videos like this, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you don't know where that is, I'm not going to teach you how to use the internet. There's probably no hope for you.